My name is Chibi, and I am the singer for the Birthday Massacre. Well, thank you for uh, speaking with us today. Thank you so much for having me. Appreciate it. Um, you guys were originally named uh, Magica. Uh, why did you change your name to uh, Birthday Massacre, and how does that name better reflect what the band does? Um, it's really hard to think up band names. Pretty much everything is taken if it's one word. And when we were a Magica, which is a, after a Clive Barker novel, right? Um, there was, I mean, there's a lot of other bands called the Magica, and it wasn't fair to to them or to you know. So um, we had the song "Happy Birthday" at that time was called the Birthday Massacre. So we just decided to change the name to that because it would be recognizable to people who already knew the band, mm. and also because the whole we do a lot of contrast stuff with the music and with the visuals, sort of dark and light and creepy and cute, and so uh, "Birthday and Massacre" just seemed to encapsulate that. Okay. Now, uh, the group kind of started out as a bunch of friends just hanging out and kind of making music. Uh, is that still how you view the band, or has it kind of grown bigger than that? I mean, fundamentally, that is still what it is. I mean, it's not as simple, obviously, as it used to be. And mm. now, I mean, it, it is a, it's a business, and, you know, we, we have to we take things. It's just things are very different now, obviously, than they were in college. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, fundamentally, at the end of the day, it's still me and Mike and Rainbow writing the songs and having fun together even though it's not always fun, and it's sure. 13 years later. <laughs> uh, what, have, what have you learned in that time about uh, being on the road, music business, uh, making records? Uh, how, how have you guys grown? I mean, in terms of the songwriting, obviously we've, we've progressed and grown in a lot of different ways, and just, I mean, personally with our relationships with each other, we've grown. I mean, we're not college students anymore. Hmm. But um, I think that one of the most important things that I, I think I've learned is just that being on the road and being around the people that we have been and having different interactions and booking agents and record labels and promoters and opening bands and opening for bands is just if you meet good people and people that you can trust, that is so valuable and so rare. So it's made me appreciate the people that I know I can trust. Because you never can tell. <laughs> Sometimes. No, you certainly <laughs> no, can. You can. Um, and it, just like you said before, uh, the band is kind of described as kind of an audio and visual experience. Uh, why is that important to combine those elements into what you do? Um, when we started the band and started taking it a bit more seriously, it sort of became an outlet for all of our creative interests. I mean, for example, Rainbow and Mike were always in bands in when they were in like high school. Mm -hmm. That was never my thing. I was always into art and, and writing, mm -hmm. so uh, and you know drawing and painting and stuff. So and, and that's how I met Rainbow is we were taking fine arts together. So doing the band sort of gave us this outlet to do everything that we want. Like you know if we wanted to paint a picture or draw a rap, bunny rabbit or write a song or whatever it was, it was just sort of a way to do that all together. Because we're I mean we're all pretty creative. All of us within the band are. Mm -hmm. So it's good to have the band to sort of be able to show show your stuff. <laughs> you know. So when you guys are writing, it's a very collaborative process. Yeah, I mean, the, the primary songwriters are me, Mike, and Rainbow. Mm. Um, but everybody contributes in different ways, and we run everything past everybody. Mm. Yeah. Um, through, it seems through the music, the artwork, the videos, uh, you've kind of maintained a, a cohesive vision throughout uh, it all. Was that the plan from the beginning, and, and how have you maintained that throughout the years? There was no plan. Yeah. I think if, I mean, we've just released our fifth album. Mm -hmm. And if you'd have told me that, you know, when the band started, I wouldn't have believed it at all. There was never a plan at all. I think the point was to just write music that we would have been interested in hearing, mm -hmm. and, and still, and it's, that's the challenge, right, is to keep writing that music that you sure. that you like and, and do things that you find interesting and that you find fun and that hopefully other people share share an interest in it. So. <laughs> uh, now, with some of you going by uh, pseudonyms, is there an element of getting into character when you're creating music or, or you're, when you're going on stage? For me, absolutely. I mean, mm. we picked the names just because we thought it was kind of funny. Like, at the time, I had a cat named Chibi, so, mm. and she's passed away now, so... I kind of, you know, oh, I still have the names, she lives on, but like, <laughs> for me, I'm not a very social person, I'm pretty awkward and, you know, not good, so the thought of going out in front of people has always terrified me, mm. it, way back in school when I do presentations and stuff, I was the idiot chewing gum, getting in trouble, throw out your gum, and then I couldn't make eye contact, I'm the worst at that, so the whole persona of just even putting on a stupid, like, costume, essentially, mm. and you know, and going out and being like, ta-da, it's like a light switch. I am not like that at all. I am not outgoing. I am I'm terrible. I'm, <laughs> I'm very antisocial. But that's not going to work if you're in a band, so. Sure. So still, even after all this. Oh, time. God, 100%. 100%. No, I'll get mm -hmm. all nervous and feel, t I mean, I have an interview. I'm like, hi, guys. And when I came in here, I was kind of fumbling and awkward because that's, <laughs> I feel awkward. 
that's know? that's okay we all do so yes exactly well that's yeah. exactly it but i think we all kind of go to this when you have to and in and being in a band you're forced and doing what you guys do you're forced to go into this social headspace that doesn't come naturally maybe sure so yeah yeah definitely yeah uh, now, as a child of the 80s, I get a very kind of 80s vibe when I listen to yes, some of the music. Yes. Is that something you guys did on purpose, or is that, did it come out naturally? I think it's, it's naturally. I mean, we grew mm-hmm. up in the 80s, too, so all the stuff mm-hmm. that, that we grew up listening to is probably a lot of the same stuff that you grew up listening to. Not that I'm going to ask your age. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, it was yeah. it, the love for that is, and especially because we read a lot of music that's sentimental to us and takes us back to these sort of innocent times in our lives, it, mm-hmm. it's definitely going to be there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I love how the band kind of has these these hard hitting riffs and beats, and then you kind of have the melodic vocals. Uh, how do you how do you blend those two sounds together and just make it work? That's kind of what we try and do with every song we write is mm-hmm. blend those different elements. And it seems I mean I don't even know how that happened. I think that mm-hmm. I mean that's the music that we write. That's that's the challenge for us. That's the, that's that's <laughs> what we want to sound like. <laughs> Uh, on In the Dark, uh, you worked with the Rue Morgue magazine on mm-hmm. the video, uh, which was kind of like a mini horror movie. What was that shoot like? It was really fun. It was actually co-directed by Mike and our band. Okay. And the Rue Morgue people are amazing. Just They're so, so nice. And there's definitely the horror movie elements there. It was a really fun... I mean, doing these shoots is always really grueling, but mm-hmm. the girl who in the who was wearing the mask, sort of the, shot, the mirror girl... Me and her became pretty good friends because we spent so much time just kind of sitting on a floor staring at each other, like, <laughs> well, my knees are hurting. So it's it's really fun. Yeah. You develop this camaraderie with people. It's a great experience. It was, I mean, every time we've done a video, it's been exhausting and grueling. And it's only three minutes long. It's like, how does it take this long to shoot <laughs> three minutes worth of stuff? But I love that video. We're, we're really proud of it. Mm. Uh, my favorite is, uh, is uh, the Looking Glass video. Uh, was that what a fun one to shoot? That too, one or? was actually amazing. That mm-hmm. was directed by Dan Ouellette, who also did the Blue video with us. And mm-hmm. he's someone that we've really, really enjoyed working with and really respect. And, uh, oh, yeah, that was great. But, I mean, we were in this sort of, I think it was a Christian school. And, like, we kind of roll <laughs> in with our stupid haircuts <laughs> and our, like, you know. Yeah. But uh, really, really creepy, the masks and stuff. It was <laughs> really fun. And just having a lot of the extras, the, the students in the class, like, it was fun to hang out and meet all those people and just try and have as much fun as you can when you're doing the same thing 56 times <laughs> and trying to look cool every time you do it. Right, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love. I really love that video too. Now, do you have any video shoots planned for anything off Hide and Seek? We had actually started planning a video uh, with a couple guys from Toronto who I don't want to say anything about in case it doesn't work out, but we're probably going to still work with them. But mm. I had a surgery that I had to have uh, leading up to this tour. Mm. And so... Uh, because in Canada we have the healthcare system where you're sort of on a waiting list. There was no way to, well, let's book the the video shoot to do this because if you don't know when your surgery appointment's going to be, it's sort of hard to plan anything. So basically the focus was this tour. Um, But hopefully, (laughs) when we get back, I think that a video shoot will definitely become a priority. Okay. Yeah. Uh, So tell me about the the making of this latest album. Uh, How is this one maybe different from uh, recording your previous releases? Um, For me... This was a really difficult, it sounds so dramatic, it was a really difficult album. <laughs> but uh, I found out that I had polyps on my vocal cords because oh, I wow. noticed when we were starting to record that I couldn't sing anymore. Jeez. And I thought it was maybe because I wasn't getting enough sleep or I wasn't hydrated enough. So mm. I tried all that stuff, I quit smoking, blah, 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 and it was still there. And we had a deadline and I found out that I actually had a problem with my vocal cords. So <laughs> we were able to achieve some really interesting stuff and I feel like it was it was successful like I Mm. was able to sing when I needed to even though it wasn't as easy a process and there's a lot of sort of anger I think that (laughs) like or frustration that uh, that is there in that album and it is so real because I was furious at the situation and I was furious that it had happened and it was a struggle for me and I think that the struggle shows in a lot of areas in the album but I think that Mm. that's why it's cool because I was in this horrible headspace and a lot of the lyrics that I was writing were really sort of dark and nihilistic because that's exactly what I was feeling. So to me, it's a really honest album. And I can't listen to some of the songs because I'm like, ugh, like that was just too, <laughs> I, was, I remember recording that and I was upset. So. so lyrically, are you usually inspired by the same type of things? Is it like whatever you're feeling at the moment or do you kind of write ahead a lot of times or definitely right ahead sometimes I mean a lot of it of course is stuff that you're thinking about stuff that you're going through or stuff that you've gone through that affects you just things that you're interested in like with with this I was in a like I said I was sort of in a dark place so I sort Mm. of was going into these 
I'm not the type of person who, if I'm bummed out, I'll throw on a romantic comedy. Like, if I'm bummed out, I kind of immerse myself in it. So I sort of, mm. there's a lot of kind of lyrics about, like, true crime and, like, unsolved mysteries because I was really just bummed out and watching stuff that was just really intense and just sort of indulging <laughs> all of this sort of negative energy. But at the end of the day, I also really love true crime and unsolved mystery stuff. So in a way, it's not negative for me because I get really into it. And, mm. And yeah. you can kind of expunge it after the fact. Right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Mm. The song "Leaving Tonight" is about, um, uh, well, kind of loosely inspired by this unsolved ki um, kidnapping murder case in Toronto from 30 years ago, oh. and I was like obsessed with it and researching all that I could. And that song to me is just, I love thinking about what that means, and it's just so creepy and sad. And <laughs> I, maybe that's kind of macabre. <laughs> I hate that word macabre. Nobody uses mm. that word. Yeah. It, so yeah. It's it's underused. I you know what? I don't think it needs to come back. No. I'm not into it. <laughs> <laughs> it's morbid. Uh, now, the, the the first song released off there, Down, um, has, like, it, and this probably touches on what you just said, uh, has some of the harsher vocals uh, on the chorus than I've ever heard you guys record. Uh, was that a challenge for you vocally? No, you that? that was actually just me. That's one of the moments I'm talking about. I can't listen to that song because it mm. makes my, it makes my palms sweat. <laughs> I was fe it was four in the morning. We'd had the most frustrating. I was recording with Rainbow, and I just had had the most frustrating day. And he was there, and we'd gone through this thing. And I was just like, I hate everything right now. I want to go home. And so then we recorded that, and it's great. But yeah. it's also it's alien to me because I never sound like that. So I don't know. Right. Yeah. It sort of makes me feel a little uncomfortable. I'm glad it's there, but I don't like listening to it, <laughs> <laughs> which is probably a little bit counterintuitive. But yeah. I'm, I'm I'm proud of it. But I don't I don't know if I could even achieve that again because I'm not in the <laughs> I'm not in that headspace really ever. Do you guys usually avoid that one live or? We're we're one... starting the set with it tonight. Oh man! So you're. You're jumping right in. I'm getting in there, but I think I can kind of put a, sort of a tongue-in-cheek spin on it now. Like, I'm not angry anymore, but again, it's that character. I have yeah. to get into it, so. Okay. Yeah. Now, what, what is it like uh, touring in the States as opposed to uh, your native Canada? Is there, is there a difference in the crowds, or? Um, there's more places to play in the States. I mean, I don't think mm. you could do a tour of Canada because the, the cities are so spread apart. I mean, on this tour, we did Winnipeg and Edmonton and... Calgary and you can we're gonna do Montreal and of course Toronto and you can do Vancouver but it's just um pardon me it's a very it's just different here there's a, a lot more that we get a lot more support from the states too in terms of press I mean can, in Canada we may as well not even exist which I find really wow. yeah I mean we've always gotten a lot of support from Europe and from the states mm -hmm. um but Canadian press just see I don't know they like to focus on the huge acts I think not so much what's going on on sort of an alternative kind of indie level. Okay. So, where do you find the the biggest support in the states? Uh, like when you tour, uh, do you find that certain places oh, are varies. better than others? I don't think that there's anything super consistent. I mean, obviously, in a city like like New York City or like Los Angeles, you're gonna have a good big show. But sure. then you'll come to like smaller markets. Markets it just sounds so hollow, doesn't it? Smaller yeah. towns where yeah. you think it's not gonna be. You're like, oh, what's this? And you look <laughs> and you're like, and you go there, and everyone is amazing. Yeah. So it's really unpredictable mm -hmm. in a lot of ways. Well, your guys' uh, show last night in New York was sold out, right? It was, yeah. That's that's huge. So uh, what was that like? What was the, the, the show like? What was the energy in the room? It was amazing. It was really, really good. I actually I uh, sprained my knee two nights ago, so mm -hmm. I'm having the, uh, the last few shows, the last show, that was the first show we did where I'm wearing this knee brace, and I can't even stand up. So, well, I, I mean, so it's like I was uh. terrified going into this because I like to run around and jump and sure. I get really into the show and that's how I have fun performing. And I'm like, okay, I have to stand there. I have to sit there. I can't mess up my knee. Uh. Sold out show in New York. Like, <laughs> I'm great. But actually it ended up being really cool and it was it was good. I mean, tonight's going to be the same thing. Second night yeah. with the old brace. So. Uh, I thought that was some sort of fashion statement. Let's pretend something. that it is. <laughs> yeah. Now, you guys have toured with some really amazing bands uh, over the last decade or so. Mm -hmm. um, what is your favorite or maybe most memorable show or tour that you guys have done? Oh, God. This, I mean, there's no... I can... Just bands that we've toured with that we are still friends with and that we can develop a feeling of family with are really important to me. Bands like... I mean, Schoolyard Heroes doesn't exist anymore, but hmm. we still see them all the time. The Start, um, Domin are really, really good friends of ours. Um, even on this tour, like I was surprised because all the bands have just bonded. I mean, just now I got off stage and 
hugged aesthetic perfection drummer Tim and I just got his black makeup all over me like it's <laughs> that's what's important to me you know what I mean is, is developing a feeling of family with people that, that you respect and who respect you and you can have fun with and trust trust it's all about the trust trust is important exactly now the the bands on this tour uh, did you guys choose them or are they uh, how, how was this no we uh, we have been there's been talking about touring with William Control for a few years but mm. it just never ended up working out but uh, so that ended up happening and Creature Feature we've toured with them for years they're another one of those bands where we're like it's like family at this point okay. and they just we basically get told who we're touring with sometimes we'll get an option of do we want this band or this band and we were just really happy with all these bands because again Creature mm. Feature we love Wind Control we've wanted to tour with and Aesthetic Perfection I think they're great I really I really like sort of their I thought that when I first heard about them, I was like really surprised that they weren't as industrial as I had anticipated. Like they've got all these great elements. So I was excited about this tour and it ended up being everything that we dreamed it would be. That's good. Except <laughs> for that, obviously. Well, yeah. You can't win them all. No. <laughs> um, so is there, uh, is there anything else that you want to talk about? I mean, those are the main questions I have, but is there anything that you want to add that you feel is important? Um. I guess just there, there was one thing I do want to address. People are getting worded out about our, us doing these VIPs before the shows. Mm. I don't know if you know anything about that, but I think people are saying, and they don't hang out anymore, and they, you need to pay to meet the band. Uh, it's not true. It's not true. Just the people who pay, pay for the VIP get an, a, pro, a poster and a laminate, mm. and we still come out and say hi to everyone and take pictures. That's always been important to us. The fans and the audience have always been the most important element, obviously, and we mm. would never all of a sudden turn into jerks. I think people like to think that you turn into a jerk. People like that. Oh, I used to. I knew them back when they were right. nice people, and now they're just so terrible. Yeah. We're not terrible. <laughs> <laughs> and other than that, I just want to thank you for the support because it's always appreciated. And you know, especially sure. coming here, it's like, okay, what's the show going to be like? And then you meet some cool people, and you realize that it's a really cool place to play. We're really happy. Yeah. Well, so thank you. Oh, well, thank you. Thank, thank you, you guys. Thank you. Oh, there you are. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot.